Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Another teardown video for you. This is the Dynaflip Terminator 2 R2R DSE. Oh, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> right. Terminator 2 from Dynaflip. It weighs about 20 kg, about 45 pounds um, in American standard. And uh, today I'm going to show you what is inside this Terminator 2 DSE. So Dynaflip has a few DSE ranging from Ares 2. Pontus 2, Venus 2, Terminator 2, and the Terminator Plus. The Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus are pretty similar. The Terminator Plus spotted a curvy front panel, and the OCXO, the crystal oscillator in the Terminator Plus, is of higher quality. And the R2R network of the Terminator Plus is hand picked with even lower THD percentage. But the Terminator 2, in my opinion, it's a pretty amazing flagship model Terminator DAC in Dynaflip's lineup. So today, I'm going to show you what's inside this and I'm going to take this piece by piece apart and this video may run a little bit longer because it's quite difficult to handle this piece on my desktop setup. We'll see. Right, let me flip it to the back. Uh, it's pretty heavy. Hopefully I don't damage anything on my table. I already have the two screw loosened here, so I can pop this top cover open pretty easily. It's made of solid piece of aluminium. Let me, let me put this top cover aside. Okay, here we go. Uh -huh. You notice I already have the screw loosened at the back. And uh, this is underneath the hood of the Terminator 2. Let me flip it. Like this, so that you guys can see it. The Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus has similar architecture. Um, in fact, they are 90% close to each other. Except that the OCXO in the Terminator Plus is of higher quality. The R2R network of the Terminator Plus are of higher quality as well. And Terminator Plus comes with a curvy front panel. And the rest are the same, I think. It comes with a digital module here a clock module and an R2R network. So you notice that it's already loosened. I have loosened most of the screw so that later I'll just need to take out two of the screw to remove this module. So the digital module and the R2R network are completely segregated with a physical break between them. The power supply is encapsulated underneath this main board and there's this metal sheet in between the board and the encapsulated power supply. We'll see the bot, we'll see the metal sheet later. Okay, the, there are this small little black color capacitor here. These are not the normal capacitor, these are the super capacitor that store very high energy. The DC voltage here is about 3.8 volts. The energy stored in this super capacitor passed out to this regulator here, another cap banks. The capacitor choice of Dynaflips is Pretty crucial as well in terms of sound quality. Dina Phillips likes to use this Elna Silmic 2 Silk capacitor for their higher range um, DSC model. Sorry, it's pretty heavy. My right hand is oh, getting tougher to hold this guy. And the digital signal right over here is processed by uh, FPGA. The FPGA will send the digital signal. Ah, oh, before I forget, the FPGA does. Two very important um, um, things to process the digital signal. The first one is the FIFO buffer. The second one is the reclocking. Reclocked by this oven control crystal oscillator. So OCXO runs pretty hot, runs at a constant temperature, so that the frequency output of the oscillator remains pretty high quality and constant throughout the same temperature. The digital signal processed by the FPGA uh, Sorry, it's moving. The digital signal processed by the FPGA is sent to this clock module here. There are these two small little chips here. These are the high-speed optocoupler that governing isolate the digital signal before sending to the two CPLD. The CPLD are microcontroller that send the digital signal to this shift resistor over here to the R2R network. So you notice there are four resistor networks here. The first two handles the left channel positive and the negative phase. 
The second tool handles the right channel positive and the negative phase. So the Alfred's DSC are full balance. The signal converted by the R to R module are output right away to the XLR connector and the RCA connector. Again, there's no output stage. The Alfred believe in the shortest path topology where the output is drawn from the R to R network right away to this output connector here. Um, of course, these are the power supply for the R to R network. You spotted quite a few of the supercapacitor here. So this supercapacitor store the high current energy and further regulated by the regulator for the clock module and regulated for the R to R network. Sorry, it's pretty tough to hold this guy for a long time. It's really heavy. <laughs> okay, so we have the encapsulated power supply underneath this guy and let me remove the clock module first. Okay. The clock module is secured by, I think it's an M2 screw. It's, it's a M copper M2, copper gold plated M2 screw, Look like this. I already have most of them removed. And let me re remove the last two pieces. Oops. Here we go. This is the clock module of Terminator 2. There are two OCXO crystal oscillator inside this casing here. There are two crystal oscillator. Uh, it is because um, 45 MHz crystal oscillator handles 44.1 kHz music tracks. 49 MHz crystal oscillator handles the 48K music tracks. So 44.1K music tracks are like 44.1, 88.2 and so on. 48k, there are 48k, 96k, 192k, 384k and so on. So this module here is the OCX small module. So it's physically removed. And we can clearly see that there's this physical segregation between the digital module and the R2R network. And let me remove the digital module. I'm sorry. I forget to remove the XLR connector screw. So please bear with me. It takes a while to remove them. It's a self tapping screw that secure this new trick XLR connector. Okay, the moment of silence. Okay. So the Interface DSC are true balance. If possible, we highly recommend to use the XLR output instead of the RCA if the downstream equipment is, is fully balanced. But if the downstream is, equipment is single-ended, you will be perfectly fine with the RCA output. The output are drawn from the R2R network, so the RCA output is drawn from the positive phase, and the XLR output comprises of positive and negative phase for the left and right channel. Okay, last two screw, and we can pop this digital, mo digital module and analog module away from the chassis. Okay. So there's this flat cable from the digital module connected to the front panel. So this flat cable connects the buttons, the LEDs to the FPGA to allow you to have some control input selection and sampling rate display on the front panel. So unclip this flat cable here and slot it in securely. You also notice that I have this. These are the cable from the power supply module to the PCB on the top. I already have I already have them this desolder. This if I'm not wrong, these are the silver wire that Dina Phipps use to uh, further improve the signal trans the voltage transmission from the power supply module to the main board. Of course, the boards are secured by a screw. I already have most of them removed. I just have to remove two of them to pop this digital mod module out from the chassis. Okay, here we go. I think that's about it. I would need to pull this guy away. Aha, uh -huh, there's a challenge. 
there's this um, earth cable that is connected is so is soldered to the IC connector. I may need to cut it away. I will see. So it's going to be a long video. So if you are interested, please stay on. Okay, I decided to remove another module instead. Uh, this is the R2R network module. There are a couple of screws that is not loosened yet. Let me remove the screw. Is there any other screw? No, there's only one. Let me remove this module first. Oh, this is this is easier. Okay, remove this guy away from the chassis. Here we go. Uh, Terminator 2 R2R network module. So it's pretty nice looking module that is segregated from the digital module completely. Here we go. And let me put this aside. Okay, don't scratch my tabletop. Okay. Right, as you can see, this is the metal sheet that segregates the main board and the power supply module. So I'm going to re remove this metal sheet as well, but now we have a challenge. How do we remove this board with this earth cable soldered to the IEC connector? Please give me a second. I think I can just cut it away. Let me see if I, I do not need to do this. Okay, the trouble with this is this XLR connector is a bit challenging to remove from the chassis. I think I need to cut it away. I already have the cutter prepared, I think. Here, here we go. Okay, let me cut away the earth cable for size, I hope. Okay. Cutter always work. Okay, let me remove this digital module from the chassis. Here we go. Okay, this is the digital module. Um, in the past, the Pontus 2, the Venus 2, or the, Termi or, or the original Terminator come with a DSP module that is user replaceable. So this digital module of the Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus is a little bit more difficult to remove, but it's still more or less modular, where you can remove this by desoldering this and desoldering this guy, and you can pop this guy away from the chassis. Right, let me put it on top of the R2R module and show you this metal sheet in between the power supply module and the main board. So this metal sheet here further shield the power supply noise coming out to, to the sensitive circuitry. There are a few screws that is securing this metal sheet and the power, power supply module. I already have most of them removed. And I'll just need to remove two of them to pop this metal sheet out. One, two. Okay. The screw doesn't want to come out. Here we go. So these are the screw that is holding this metal sheet. And let me see if I can just remove it. Aha, uh -huh. there are more screws that is holding this metal sheet. There are one, two, three screw at the back that is holding this metal sheet. So I need to remove them as well. Okay, first one. The second one. And the last one. I think we are good to pop this guy out. Okay. Okay, I better straighten this DC cable so that it is not blocking the way. Okay, here we go. This is the metal sheet to, to shield the main board and the power supply module. 
is a pretty thick one, I think about 2mm. Let me put this aside. Let's put it on my chair. Here we go. The power supply module of the Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus. So this is a pretty big one. Um, okay, so as you can see from my palm, there's a huge power transformer here, another 80 VA power transformer. So they are total 300 VA plus 80 VA power transformer encapsulated inside this power supply module. Okay, I already need to loosen the screw of the IEC inlet to assess this guy. Let me just do it right away. One, two, three. Again, it is not enough because the power supply is secured to the bottom panel by many screws. We will need to remove them in order to assess the power supply, or rather to look into the power supply. I already have most of the screw removed. Let me hold the power supply as I loosen the screw so that it will not fall by gravity hard on my table's top. Okay, one down. And the last one. Okay. I think we are good. It's pretty heavy. Okay. Right. We can then remove the chassis away from the power supply module. And it is not doing it because the IC IEC connector is holding the cable. Hang on, let me let me assess this. I'm not sure whether this video will be of interest to you, but I'm pretty interested in all this electronic stuff. I'm an electronic trained person. I like metal with electronic stuff since I was a boy. I think this is in my blood. That's why I'm doing this as a hobby. Here we go. Wow, it's pretty heavy. Okay, the chassis of the Terminator 2. I think it weighs about at least 5 kg. And we have everything removed except for the control board and the IEC. Let me put this safely aside again on my chair. It's on drop. Okay, here we go. Uh -huh, this is the cable that I cut. This cable is supposed to hold the digital board earth cable from the IEC earth connection point to the digital module. But I cut it away for science. <laughs> okay, it's a pretty big power supply module spotted with a huge 250VA or is it 300? No, it's a 250. 250VA transformer and an 80 VA transformer. So you can say it's a, it's a 250 watts transformer and an 80 watt transformer. So again, Tina Phillips, Pontus 2, Venus 2, Terminator 2, or the Terminator Plus uses auto voltage sensing circuitry that it sends the IEC AC voltage, be it 120 for US, 240 for the EU, UK, or like me in Singapore. Once the sensing circuitry detected, detected the voltage correctly, it will switch a couple relay here to send the correct voltage to the transformer. The transformer will power up and it will, it will step down the AC voltage to a smaller AC voltage here. And the smaller AC voltage here gets converted to DC by using the high-speed Socrates diode. And there are a couple of uh, capacitor bank here among, along with the super regulator to further um, further improve the DC quality. So I call this a super regulator circuitry as well as the super regulator circuitry here. So this, this um, clean DC are sent to the digital module by using this short cable here. So instead of using um, a standoff and screws, you now first use high quality cable. I think it's silver cable. High quality silver cable to send the DC voltage to the digital module on top and the DC voltage plus minus 7.5 volt to the R2R network. So the power supply is, you can say the power supply is segregated uh, for the AC and DC 
I'm sorry. You can see that the power supply is segregated for the digital section and the analog section. So thanks for watching the video until the end. I hope you enjoyed this teardown. I will see you next time. Bye bye.